Hi, today we're going to look at The Map Woman by Carolyn Duffy. Okay, so The Map Woman. We start with the first stanza, A woman's skin was a map of the town where she'd grown from a child. Well, this suggests that her skin is a metaphor for her journey through life. And when she went out, she covered up with a dress, with a shawl, with a hat. Notice the, um, the listing there, the syndetic listing, with a, with a, or the syntactic parallelism as well, uh, with the repetition of um, the syntax, with a dress, with a shawl, with a hat. Um, this listing goes on throughout the poem, and there's this, the moment becomes but, it sort of halts on but, birthmark, tattoo, the A to Z street map grew. Notice the internal rhyme there as that sort of hiatus occurs. A precise second skin, the alliterative second skin, broad if she binged, alliteration as well, thin when she slimmed, just pure rhyme, um, and a pracy, the meaning of a summing up really, of where to end or go back or begin. So it suggests that this, um, that her skin ref is, acts as some kind of um, guide as to uh, where she is in her life, perhaps. In the second stanza, uh, we get this continuation of listing. Um, of alleys and streets and walks um, and her veins like shadows below the si lines of the map so we get this simile of her veins being like shadows it's as if her history is being a history of her life is being reflected on her body um, like the the map um, on her body is uh, reflecting the life that she's had perhaps the river and artery snaking north to her neck um, she knew if you crossed the bridge at her nipple, took a left and a right, you would come to the graves, the grey-haired teachers of English and history. So in, in one sense, you've got the actual map of the town where you would, as if she's visiting her old town and she would see her history, uh, where the teachers of, of her youth have now ended up. Okay, so literally, um, you know, coming to the graves of her old town. But could we see that reflected in her body as well? Um, the soldier boys, the mayors and councillors. So we're looking at the history of the town that she's come back to. Um, but at the same time, some kind of ageing process perhaps is occurring to her as well. Um, and this is what we see uh, on, on, on her body, as it were. Um, so the third stanza, the beloved mothers and wives. Notice how it continues without a capital there, straight on into the next uh, section, next stanza. Uh, mothers and wives, the nuns and priests, um, once again the listing continues, their bodies fading into earth like old print on a page. So the simile of, of these um, uh, people in her history disappearing. So people that have been important to her, like perhaps English teachers and history teachers, um, mothers, wives, nuns, priests, all these things would have been uh, of, of importance, but they now fade um, like old print on a page. This simile really suggests how strongly she senses this feeling of, of decay, maybe, of disappearance. Um, then it addresses us directly, you. Uh, Mid, mid stanza as it were you could sit on a wooden bench as a wedding pair ran ringed from the church confetti skittering over the marble stones notice the word skittering there the language she uses very much uh, of that um, position of that um, part of the world very colloquial um, the big bell hammering hail from the sky so powerfully alliterative uh, line there big bell hammering hell so we've got this strong image of a married couple suddenly you know new life new birth um, and wonder who um, you would marry and how and where and when you would die so this listing goes on how and where and when so we're looking back to a time when it was all potential all right the key word is potential i would say where when she looks back and and remembers a time when you don't know who you're going to marry you don't know anything that's going to happen to you uh, you know it's like being um like like the married bride and the groom who have a future in front of them clearly this woman is looking back on this time you know um 
or find yourself in the coffee house nearby, waiting for time to start, your tiny face trapped in the window's bottle-thick glass like a fly, waiting for time to start. Probably we, we would consider that a child looking in the window um, as if time doesn't start until the shop opens. So we're looking back to her youth when time was different. So it's as if she's suddenly um, going back in time, looking through her town, thinking back over her life. And so we come on to the fourth stanza. And once again, this direct address, and who might you see shortcutting through the grove to the square? Notice the grove to the square, as if, you, as if it's you we're talking to here, as if you know where these places are. That line there, the edge of a fingernail pressed on her flesh. So we have this parenthesis used here, that line there, the edge of a fingernail pressed on her flesh. Okay, so once again we've returned to the body, as if her body is reflecting this. Um, but we're still in the town, we're still in the town reminiscing as we were. In the rain, leaving your empty cup to hurry on after calling their name. Okay, we don't know who their name is necessarily. Um, when she showered, the map gleamed on her skin. So we're back to the map, we're talking to the woman, uh, talking of the woman, um, the map woman, and this, this map gleaming on her skin. So are we looking at her skin literally, or are we looking at the way time is reflected on her skin? Blue, black ink from a nib. So it's as if her whole history is reflected on her body, you might say. Um, she knew you could scoot down Greengate Street, huddling close to the high house, the sensible shops, the Swan Hotel, till he came to the picture house, sat in the musty dark watching the Beatles. Well, Caroline Duffy would have grown up in a time when the Beatles were around. She probably went to see them, may, may well have seen them live, um, or, or watched them on the cinema screen. So, um, this is reference, once again, we, we assume slightly autobiographical, to a past life. Um, I like the way there's this reference to the sensible shops. We consider those the ones where you, know, you had to buy things for school in, perhaps. Um, but it's all very much uh, looking at a past life in what we, we assume is the person's hometown. Okay. Now this uh, fifth stanza, it's... it's uh, I've lost the last line of it, and we'll see that in a moment. Um, run for a train. Uh, watching the Beatles run for a train. Uh, so we notice how that's an enjambment there, as it, as it literally goes between the stanzas as well, not just over the line. Run for a train. Um, why, why, would they, why would she do that? Well, we assume that sat in the musty dark watching the Beatles stands alone as it is. That's pretty momentous as it is. Um, but watching them run for a train, well, we know that they're referring to the film Help, very likely. Uh, or Dustin Hoffman screaming, Elaine, Elaine, Elaine. Um, internal rhyme, and also referring to the film The Graduate, um, where Dustin Hoffman rescues uh, a woman, you might say rescues a woman from uh, a wedding. And, um, you know, key films of the late 60s, early 70s, okay? Or Spaceman in 2001, Floating to Strauss. Well, that's a reference to Space Odyssey, uh, 2001, A Space Odyssey, uh, Stanley Kubrick film. Um, so these are all films of the early 70s. So we're looking back to the early 70s here, okay? Not to 2001. Uh, she sponge soap scrubbed, okay, so once again the alliteration refers to her literally in the shower, we assume, but also this is her trying to get to the root of something when she visits this town. She's trying to cleanse herself, she's trying to find out what it is perhaps that she's looking for. Um, the prison and hospital stamped on her back. We're not quite sure what that could mean other than actual locations in the town uh, that she had something to do with. So the prison and the hospital are two things which are, and it's a stamped, notice the kind of violent language of stamped on her back. So something has, uh, she has some kind of history with these two places. Um, and potentially not a very nice history by the t use of the word stamped. The part neat on her belly her navel marking the spot where the empty bandstand stood. So her navel somehow reflects something empty. Could that be referring to a pregnancy, a lost pregnancy perhaps? The river again, 
heading south, clear as an operation scar. Okay, so the river literally heading south through the town, but uh, similar to a scar, maybe a caesarean she might have had, or an operation of any kind on her body. And here's the rest of stanza five, the war memorial facing the railway station where trains side on the platforms pining for Glasgow, London, Liverpool, she knew. Notice that enjambment again, she knew, which goes on into the sixth stanza, she knew you could stand on the railway bridge waving goodbye to strangers. So she knew stands on its own. There's a message there of some kind. What are they saying? She knew. Um, she knew what she's looking for. She suddenly knew what she was looking for. What is the significance of the war memorial facing the railway station where trains side on the platforms? Um, I like the term uh, pining for Glasgow, London, Liverpool. These are the places where she had to go. And it's almost like she, she's saying as if she had to go to these places. These were the big cities. These were the places she was drawn to. Well, we also know, in, if we're thinking autobiographically, Caroline Duffy um, may certainly have pined for these places. Liverpool was where the, um, the great poets were during the 60s and 70s. Um, uh, so um, certainly the, the Liverpool poets. And... Um, Henri uh, would have been one of these. Um, you could stand on the railway bridge waving goodbye to strangers who stared as you vanished into the belching steam. Okay, so this is like, as we said, an enjambment from the previous stanza. Um, she knew you could stand on the railway bridge. Um, and we've got this strong image of uh, these people, uh, strangers, disappearing into a belching steam, um, tasting future time. Notice the term, notice the use of the, the language tasting on the tip of your tongue. Um, so like uh, an enjambed uh, line, tasting future time, stands alone, okay? But tasting future time on the tip of your tongue as well, okay? So it's almost like you could taste um, and, and the cinders and the smoke there would be a certain taste and smell, um, but she's, she's uh, linking that as if it's her future. Um, she knew you could run the way back home. There it was on her thigh. Okay, once again, the parenthesis used here mid stanza, um, as if there was a map on her thigh as to the way home, taking the southern road, then cutting off to the left. Okay, so we don't need to know what these directions mean necessarily, but it's clearly very specific to her, as if her legs will carry her on that route. Um, the big houses anchored behind their calm green lawns, jewels of conkers falling down at your feet. Um, so once again, very specific imagery of the world in which this uh, narrator grew up. Okay, um, duck and dive down Nelson and Churchill. We're talking about street names and Kipling and Milton Way until you were home. Well, they are street names, Nelson and Churchill, but of course they're also your history teacher would have would have come across these. So these are these are her history lessons, Nelson and Churchill, of course, Kipling and Milton being your English teacher. You know, famous poets, famous, um, and and Nelson and Churchill being an admiral. And, and a uh, famous head of state. So we've got our English teachers, we've got our um, history teachers here. So not only is this a reference to our old streets, but it's also a reference to our old uh, education, you might say. Okay, so the seventh stanza, she didn't live there now. Okay, we go straight to she lived down south, abroad, en route, up north, on a plane or train or boat, or on the road, in hotels, in the back of cabs, on the phone. So this list, once again, this list of places, of things, of specific places where she could be. It doesn't really matter, in other words, she doesn't live there now, this, this town that's so important to her. But the map was under her stockings, under her gloves, under the soft silk scarf at her throat. At her throat under her chiffon veil, a delicate braille. All right, so we realize that what it is, it is her body. Under all these things is her body. And under her body is this delicate braille, something you can feel. You run your hands over it, she runs her hands over it, and she feels what time has done to her, what, what history has done to her. She is a map of all that she's been through. Okay, her left knee marked the grid of her own estate. 
<laughs> right? So that's probably, you know, literally, partly, her left knee, um, if you look down on a knee, you can see how that might look like a street map in some ways. Or it might show scars of, of where she grew up in and she fell down. You know, it, it could uh, literally be like a road map of her own estate. Something she would have looked at at that age, her knee, you know, maybe if she'd scuffed it or something. But it reminds her. It hasn't changed, of course. It hasn't changed. The knee is more or less the same. When she knelt, she felt her father's house pressing into the bone. That's a curious one. But when you kneel down, perhaps that brings back memories. Heard in her head, notice the alliteration, the looped soundtrack of then, a tennis ball repeatedly thumping a wall. All right, the looped soundtrack. So when she was bored, very likely, or she sat in her room or sent to a room, whatever, she would be sending this tennis ball bouncing against the wall, perhaps, or playing tennis against the wall. We don't know, but it's a looped soundtrack. All these memories are flooding back to her as she walks these streets. Okay, so we move on. An ice cream van crying and hurrying on. Once again, it's an enjambe from the previous stanza. Um, an ice cream van, okay, you can imagine how that sound would f bring back memories flooding back from that period. So this person is clearly walking around these streets and hears this ice cream van. A snarl of children's shrieks from the overgrown land where the houses ran out. Okay, so you've got a sense of an estate here or, or something where, where it just ends. Okay, um, and the snarl, the hurrying on, one suggests that this isn't particularly a nice area now, perhaps. The, note, the motorway groaned just out of sight. So we've got snarl, shrieks, groaned. She, she knew you could hitch from Junction 13 and knew of a girl who had not been seen since she did. So, the, these very specific items um, mean that we know that she knows this area very well. This is an area she grew up in, and the feelings now are not particularly positive. Had heard of a kid who'd run across all six lanes for a dare before he was tossed by a lorry into the air like a doll. So, sort of mid-rhyme, um, like a doll, uh, the simile... Uh, creates this image of ruthless, this ruthless world where you get picked up by a car and you're never seen again, or if you try and cross this road you're destroyed. You know, danger is not far away when she, you know, in this town. But the motorway was flowing away, it was a roaring river of metal and light, cheerio, au revoir, of Wiedersehen, ciao. Okay, suggesting international travel. This was the route was out of this place. Okay. Uh, uh, this roaring river, this metaphorical reference to um, what it could be. It could be an escape route for her. So although it's a dangerous area she grew up in, or it is now perhaps, or it certainly was then, it is also an escape route, that motorway. It's something you must address. Okay, so this stands, uh, um, which one are we on? Five, Six, seven, eight, ninth stanza. She stared in the mirror. She got dressed, both arms raised over her head. So we're back to her after uh, the shower, as it were. The roads for east and west running from shoulder to wrist. The fuzz of woodland or countryside under each arm. Well, obviously, you know, she's playing with um, both sides of the coin here. Is it the town itself? Is it the body we're referring to? So partly it's the body, the fact that she's got hair under her arms, and partly it's not the body, it's the town, because it's woodland or countryside, hidden away. So there's a clever little metaphor going on here, that, that, the, that the, um, the woodland could be hidden away under each arm. Well, there's a sense of it being hidden somewhere, somehow. Um, only her face was clear, her fingers smoothing in cream, her baby blue eyes unsure as they looked at themselves. Notice this baby blue eyes suggest that she's still young at heart, there's still, a, there's still a certain youthfulness to her, but her body was certain, an inch to the mile. Well, that's interesting. Inch to the mile is the Ordnance Survey map that they used to be able to purchase from news agents, and you probably still can, and they were one inch to the mile. That was the scale of them, okay? For every inch, you looked at a mile on the map. 
So that's a reference to the Ordnance Survey map. Knew every nook and cranny, cul-de-sac style, back road, high road, low road, one-way street of a past. Then it was all. Then it then all, it all was back. So once again, on Jean being used at the end of the stanza, we don't need to look at the next part yet. It's just back, as if she's suddenly got back to the meaning. What does this all mean? This this journey back to this town. Okay, she's li- and that list is going on again. You know, she look at the, look at that list, the nook and cranny, cul-de-sac style, back road, high road. It goes on throughout the poem. What does it mean? And it seems to have suddenly come back to her. Okay, back. Okay, and we move on to the next stanza. And here we have it, back to front in the glass. So suddenly it becomes back to front in the glass. All right, so something's clear, but it's not quite, it's not quite correct. She piled on linen, satin, silk, leather, wool, perfume and mousse and went out. So on went the clothing, as it were. She got in a limousine. Interesting, suggests that she is now, uh, you know, affluent. The map perspired under her clothes. We're talking about her body, obviously. She took a plane. The map seethed on her flesh. She spoke in a foreign tongue. The map translated everything back to herself. She turned out the light and her lover's hands caressed the map in the dark from north to south. So this, she did this, she did that. This, once again, a list occurs. No matter what she does, the old town, her, her first 5, 10, 15 years are somehow affecting the way she reacts. So although she might get in the limousine, she may do very well, um, she may get on a plane, at all times the map, the history of her, the background to her, somehow reacts, is somehow affected. So we're saying here that no matter what she does, she cannot lose that history, that background, that map that's there. Her old estates, her old roads, those teachers, all those things are still there. No matter what she does, they're still, they're still uh, affecting her reaction, as it were. And um, I say on Jean there, actually, it's my mistake. That's actually still the same stanza because it's just the way it's printed. Um, All fingers and thumbs as their map flapped in the breeze. So, um, yeah, she turned out the light and her lover's hands caressed the map in the dark from north to south. Lost tourists wandering here and there, all fingers and thumbs as their map flapped in the breeze. So it's as if... um, Whatever she does, as we were saying, it, it's somehow um, still her history influences her reaction, as it were. Uh, lost tourists, though, wandering here and there. Um, I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Um, uh, that part mystifies me slightly. Um, perhaps she's a lost tourist or others around her. Um, I don't know, but I, w- I would leave that one for now. I'm not absolutely certain about that. Um, so we go on to, uh, the, um, so one day, wondering where to go next, she went back, drove a car for a night and a day till the town appeared on her left. Okay, so she quite literally, she drives back to that town. The stale cake of the castle, well, you can imagine a, a castle tends to look like a stale cake on top of a hill. Um, this is obviously a metaphor, and with the alliteration, castle crumbled up on the hill, and she hired a room. It's alliteration going on all the way through the poem. Um, I'm not sure how and she hired has uh, an, a strong symbolism or, or effect other than um, it, it emphasizes for some reason and she hired but I can't say exactly what the effect is. A room with a view and soaked in the bath. Um, a room with a view, obviously perhaps a reference to E.M. Forster, a room with a view, uh, meaning in that book that it was, uh, we had broad horizons. Soaked in the bath, when it grew dark she went out thinking she knew the place like the back of her hand. Well, it's funny because that's exactly what we're talking about, isn't it? It is knowing the place as if your body is a map. Um, so she actually does know the place like the back of her hand. Uh, something was wrong. So that but something was wrong refers us back to um, the previous two stanzas where we said there it was back to front in the glass. So it's like she's getting the message but it's not quite clear. 
Something's wrong. She got lost in arcades, in streets with new names, in precincts and walkways, and found that that what was familiar, and we leave it hanging there, what was familiar, the enjambment at the end of the stanza, something is lost. We don't know what, so we read on. Okay, so um, the revelation in the penultimate stanza is all that was familiar, and found that what was familiar was only facade. Um, so, it's suddenly she realizes although she thought she had this sense of history clear and what it means to her it's it seems to be only uh, a fake a mask something isn't right she's it's it, the things that are familiar are just street names and buildings really they're just just looks back in her hotel room she stripped and lay on the bed as she slept her skin sloughed in other words, sort of came off like a snake's. Well, this is the map woman. So if her skin's coming off, then the map's disappearing. Perhaps her history is disappearing. Uh, like a snake's, the skin of her legs like stockings, silvery sheer, like the long gloves of the skin of her arms. All right? Notice this repetition of S, this alliterative S, sheer, skin, stockings, silvery. It's similar to, you know, things sliding off, I suppose. The papery camisole from her chest, a perfect match for the tissue shocks um, of the skin of her feet. Okay, Her sleep peeled her, all right? so it's like the map is removing, lifted a honeymoon thong from her groin. Okay, So a honeymoon, strong memories of your honeymoon obviously, that's also going. A delicate bra of skin from her breast, so that's gone. All of it patterned A to Z. A small cross where her parents' skulls grinned at the dark. What would that mean? Perhaps that's a reference to parents dying and the darkness being death and this cross being a reminder that, you know, you can grin at the dark perhaps if there's a belief in a god. Okay, her new skin showed barely a mark. All right, so it's as if her skin has removed itself in the penultimate stanza and... It's almost like she's got rid of that history of the town. So here it is, the final stanza. She woke and spread out the map on the floor. What was she looking for? All right, so once again, we're literally, uh, the map has come off her, as it were, and she's looking at this map. She's, this is a woman that's gone back to her hometown, I think, and she's looking at, and she's sort of sat, metaphorically, thinking over what this all means, what these old places mean to her? Um, what was she looking for? When, when she went back to the town, what was she looking for? Her skin was her own small ghost, a shroud to be dead in. Okay, that's So when we talk, to her about her, talk about her skin, we're also talking about the town, you could say. A newspaper for old news to be read in. Gift wrapping, litter, a suicide letter. She left it there, dressed, checked out, got in the car. And she drove. The town in the morning sun glittered behind her, right? Behind her, notice. She's leaving the town. She ate up the miles. Her skin itched. All right, so ate up the miles. All right, so with obviously the map woman, this, this reference to the map being part of her body. She's eating up the miles. Her skin itched like a rash, like a slow burn, felt stretched as though it belonged to somebody else. Interesting. As she leaves the town, as she leaves the town and leaves this history behind her, it's almost this. It's interesting how it feels slightly uncomfortable. Deep in the bone, old streets tunneled and burrowed, tunneling. Sorry, deep in the bone, old streets tunneled and burrowed, hunting for home. Notice the alliteration of hunting for home. Um, the, the the point is that deep in the bone, um, there seems to still be an unrest. There, something um, is. Uh, searching, she's still searching for that, what that town means, those old streets, still looking for some kind of meaning. So her journey to that town seems to have been, um, there's some kind of meaning, but it was ultimately unsatisfactory. There's unfinished business there.